Many of us played through one of the three beta weekends and are still deciding which class to play, let alone which build. In this video today, I will be continuing my series of theory crafting some early leveling builds for Diablo 4's launch. Today's class is our Firewall Sorcerer build. Now, as just a quick disclaimer, these are, of course, theory crafted builds and will more than likely change once any balancing patches have been made on launch, which Blizzard has just announced will be coming right at the launch of the game. I'll first give you an overview of the build, then a per level breakdown of the skill choices, then close the video out talking about aspects and gear options. If this is your first time on my channel. The way I do things here is by front loading the info in my video so you can decide if this is the video for you. This is a per level guide on which abilities to take. You can find the entire build linked in the description and the pinned comment, as well as a Google doc to the per level choices we've made. So that way you don't have to see everything put together. You can kind of actually just follow along with that Google doc. It's got like fancy conditional formatting and check marks you can use, all sorts of fun stuff. You can quickly navigate to any part of the video that interests you the most using the chapters in both the timeline and the description. And lastly, please don't forget to follow me on Twitch where I will be streaming Diablo 4 as well as plenty of other games. Well, let's get started here on my Sorcerer leveling build for Diablo 4. So here we have the build and unlike our other builds, this is going to require some finessing of respecking and unspecking certain skills as we move through it at around like level 18 or 20. But we're going to be starting off with Firebolt as just our basic ability here. The real big thing we want to do here is that it is a source of burning. The point of this build is to pull burning from multiple sources to help increase damage for us. So we have Firebolt, and then we're going to pick a lot, a lot of stuff from this section. And what you're going to see is with a lot of Sorcerer builds online, almost all of them pull either all of these skills or two or three of them at the minimum because you want teleport. That's going to be our primary movement spell. Uh, but the nice thing about teleport is that it also makes us unstoppable. It gives us damage reduction. It's a stupid good ability. We're going to have ice armor here for a barrier. And we're also going to have frost nova, which gives us the ability to just inflict vulnerable on whim in an AOE around us. It's another really, really good ability. And the nice thing about all these is they don't cost any mana. None of these three abilities cost you mana. They just say cooldown, cooldown, and well, cooldown. Uh, this even has a lucky hit. Uh, Flame Shield also is going to be another one you're going to see in a lot of builds. We did not go with it in this build. It is another source of burning, uh, but instead we opted for Hydras. Now, Hydras did, of course, get a nerf in the uh, beta branches or beta patches, whatever the hell it is. I'm not playing Bannerlord anymore. But they're still extremely effective and really good. It's persistent damage with a 53% lucky hit. They're a really awesome option here. And again, it's another source of burning damage because of Summon Hydra. They now burn things. Uh, we're also going to be taking Meteor, and Meteor will not actually be on our bar. Meteor will be enchanted. So this means that lucky hit up to an 8% chance for a Meteor to fall on enemies. And we're going to buff that lucky hit chance percentage up to actually trigger a lot. So... You're going to have meteors falling from the ground. You're going to be using firewall as your primary source of damage here. So create a fire, a wall of fire, a flame that burns enemies for 224% damage over eight seconds. Guess what? It's another source of burning. So you're going to really be stacking one, two, three, four sources of burning coming at you hot and heavy, which is quite lovely. Um, and then our final, our capstone is going to be combustion. Your burning effects deal 2% increased damage per unique source of burning you have. Well, we've got four uh, <laughs> applied to the enemy. If the enemy is burning from three or more, well, we've got four. This bonus is doubled. So we're getting 8% up to now 16% damage per unique source of burning. So it's a really awesome ability. You're really hinging into this awesome cascade of flames and fire and meteors going all over the place an alternative build to this is actually focusing on meteor rather than a uh, firewall and actually having this on your ball bar um, i just wanted to go with something like firewall because i think it's kind of a unique play style that we haven't been able to really pull out from the sorcerer in the last two diablos it's just now that diablo 2 reborn or resurrected or revisited whatever the hell it is is allowing us to actually have cogent firewall builds so i wanted to have some fun with this as i think it's a pretty cool and pretty interesting and different sorcerer build let's get into the per level breakdown so we've reset this bad boy and we're going from level one now anything that i talk about as far as notes go when it comes to at certain levels do certain things i've gone ahead and put it in the notes section so if you're following along you're like man i don't know what he said i, I don't understand it um, I've, I actually have a point where I, I pivot here. So like stuff like this, upon unlocking firewall, respect to glinting fireball. So I'll go through how that works, but um, in case you miss it, it's right there. And it's also in the Google doc. So 
Our first two points are going to be into Firebolt for Enhanced Firebolt, getting that pierce through burning enemies, which is going to be quite lovely, as you know how much we are going to be doing. So Fireball is what we'll be doing for our core ability, and we'll actually be specking out of core abilities in due time. But for now, we're going to go all the way into Greater Fireball. Fireball deals 10% of the burning damage you've applied to enemies as additional direct damage. And that brings us up to level 6, and we're going to go back here into Flickering Firebolt. Now we're going to respec out of this and go into glinting, but the reason we're going with flickering now is that it helps generate mana. So this way you just kind of have a little bit more mana to play with in the early portions of the game where you will undoubtedly have mana problems. So you can go ahead and kind of uh, scrub that away. Now as we come into our next set, which we've just unlocked, we're going to be staying here for quite some time. We're going to unlock teleport. We're going to unlock Ice Armor, and we're going to unlock Frost Nova. So your skill bar will have all five of these abilities. This will be your left click. This will be your right click. You'll have your movement ability with Teleport, which is going to also give you Unstoppable, which is quite lovely, as we've talked about. And, it's, well, it's a Teleport. It's probably the best It's the best travel skill in all of Diablo. <laughs> then we have Ice Armor here, which is going to be your barrier. Um, a barrier of ice forms around you for six seconds, absorbing 30% of your base life in damage, uh, while Ice Armor is active, 5% of your damage dealt is added to its barrier. So it's a very, very nice ability here. It's very strong. And then Frost Nova. So now that we've got those three, we're actually going to focus on Frost Nova first, going into Enhanced Frost Nova, which allows you to kill enemies. Frozen by Frost Nova reduces its cooldown, which is lovely. And then this is the best ability, probably as far as like AoE abilities go in this game, this is one of the strongest ones because you are just adding vulnerable for four seconds increased to six seconds against bosses every time you press frost nova which is also freezing and or slowing things so it's it's an amazing ability you press a button and it's a free get out of jail free card if you're if you're stuck up with a lot of enemies around you it's it's too good almost please don't please don't nerve this but that unlocks our next tier, which will enables us to get Hydra, which we're going to push all the way into Summoned Hydra. So Hydra also burns enemies for an additional 12% of its base damage dealt over 6 seconds. Now we've added another layer of burning here. That's, of course, a big thing that we're focusing on, right? And the nice thing about Enhanced Hydra, too, is that while healthy, you cast an additional Hydra head. Well, when you cast Hydra, it has an additional head, so it does more damage. Um... So Hydra is, of course, if you play with it during the beta, you know how strong it can be. Uh, they did nerf it a little bit. It's not, it's not terribly nerfed, though. It's still quite good, and it is going to be able to do quite a bit of damage here. And like I've said many times, it's another source of burning. So we want to get Align the Elements next, which I can't remember where it is in this actual thing. Oh, go, 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 go. Align, there it is. We get one point into Align the Elements. So you gain 1% DR against elites for each second you haven't taken damage from 1 up to 40%. So I want you to think of this in the frame of a boss fight rather than on the open world map. You gain 1% DR against elites for each second you haven't taken damage. So it's going to take you 40 seconds with one point of this inv invested. Don't worry, I'll, I'll shave this down in a little bit. But on a first rank, it's not too great, but it gets pretty cool and spicy. Then we're going to jump into protection to get us one point to unlock firewall. Using a cooldown, which is your abilities um, grants 10 percent of your max life as a barrier for two seconds so you can use barrier which has a cooldown which gives you a barrier and this is going to trigger to give you a barrier <laughs> so you are just completely barriered up and actually quite tanky so now we're level 18 well we're 17 going to be 18 and let's say we we've got a point right we just hit level 18 we are not actively 17 for what I'm about to explain. I'm saying we just hit 18. We've got a point. Let's put it into firewall. Nay, we are not going to do that. What you're going to do instead is place a point here into, where is it? Oh, it's all the way over here. Into potent warding. After casting a non-basic skill, you gain 2% resistance to all elements and 1% additional resistance to that skill's uh, element for three seconds so it's funky right but it's it's quite good because it's going to give you quite a bit so let's go ahead and show you how you do this so you put a point the point that it would go into firewall you're putting it here now you can reduce a point from great fireball put it here put, reduce a point from enhanced fireball put it here and then that one from here and that one from uh we'll put that Oof, i think i messed this up do this than that yeah there we go so we're keeping fireball re removing flickering fireball and putting into glittering uh glinting firebolt 
removing fireball and now putting that into firewall. It's a real wild way to do it, but the reason we've done that is because you need we have all the minimum points required to get to each one of these tiers. So I can't just go up here and go right click, right click, right click and just remove all these points and put them in. I have to basically leapfrog the points one at a time into potent warding, retain that fireball point, reduce my flickering, put it into glinting firebolt, and then now take out my fireball and put it into firewall to just step you through that one more time. And the reason we're going to glinting here is now crit strikes with firebolt increase the burning damage you'll deal to the enemy by 20% for four seconds. That's a 20% burning damage bonus. And it's awesome. It applies to all of our burning sources, which is, as you know, plenty. But now that we've got firewall, we're just going to go ahead and go down that line. So enhance fireball, enemies take 25% increased burning damage from you while standing in firewall. Well, they're now going to take 45% increased burning damage because of that previous one we just did if you crit strike. And then mage is firewall. Enemies continue burning for three seconds after leaving firewall. So basically, you can, if you can't tell, you know, we're really focusing on um, burning. So once we've done that now, we're at level 21, 20, we're at 20. We're going to put points here into firewall, put two points into this. As I've said many, many, many times in all my build guide videos, these first two points are more critical. They're the most critical of any ability. They give you the most damage returned versus the latter two, which are a little bit more on the diminishing turn scale. So you always kind of swing back for the latter two. Um, any build guide that tells you to go five deep in the beginning, unless it's got a very specific route, don't necessarily listen to that. Put the two in to get you up to three to five, and then come back and circle around to put the other two points in because your your damage uh, difference is not as critical with those last two points. You're not gonna just jump up in, in, in uh, uh, punch ability all of a sudden. But we're gonna put two more points down into protection, bringing us up to level 24, and now we're gonna start buffing up some of our defensive characteristics because we are probably gonna start ramping into some harder boss fights. Um, Nightmare is not around the corner, it's probably 20 levels away, but you might as well be prepared for it. So we're gonna go um, uh, two points into protection. So now using a cooldown grants us 30% of your max life as barrier, which is the same one as ice armor, which is great. So now we're going to enhance our ice armor. So that while ice armor is active, your mana regeneration is increased by 25%. And we're going to do shimmering ice armor. So I mean, enemies that hit you while ice armor is active have a 15% to become 15% chance to become frozen. So you are very, very tanky. And we're going to go enhance teleports. So your cooldown is reduced by 0.5 seconds per enemy hit up to three seconds. So if you drop this on a bunch of people, you've got plenty of things to uh, reduce the cooldown here on Enhanced Teleport. And we're going into Shimmering Teleport to give us 30% damage reduction, not to elites, not on any kind of percent chance basis or a lucky hit. It's just a 30% DR for five seconds. It is a great, great survivability here. Um, but that brings us here into um, some other fun abilities now because we, ha we have unlocked our ultimates, but we are not choosing any ultimates in this build and i won't lie to you inferno is a really cool ultimate that has aspects that make it so that meteorites fall down when you cast inferno if you want to go with inferno and try that out please by all means do it just just remove some of the uh the passives here play these builds as i've always said guys use it as a loose guideline play the game how you want it's your first time jumping in don't put yourself on the rails and think you have to follow some random content creator's opinion of how to play the game play the game how you want because it's going to make you better at playing your class after you get to the max level then figure out what build you really want to go with but i just want to really kind of encourage different play styles within this build if you really want to go with it so we're going to get some passives and our first two here are going to be into inner flames your pyromancy skills now deal 6% increased damage while you are healthy. And since if you're healthy, you now also get that enhanced Hydra here. So being healthy is a pretty good thing um, in a lot of ways, more than one. It's a life lesson for you. We're also going to put a point here into Meteor because now we are level 30. And what that means is we can use both of our enchantment slots, meaning we're going to have both fireball. So when you kill an enemy, they explode in a fireball for 50% of its damage, which is just stupid good. And Meteor will now occupy your next enchantment slot. Lucky hit up to an 8% chance for Meteor to fall on enemies. Now remember, just like this is, works for Necromancer um, and the Bloody Mist uh, uh, aspect, the way the game works is when it says a Meteor, it's your skill Meteor. So if you have zero Meteor, well, that's not, that's not possible. You have to actually have a point into it. 
But still, my point is, um, whatever skill points you have invested in this, that's the meteor that drops from the high heavens. So you want to make sure you have this thing really, really, really boost to Monte. So it's only 8% lucky hit right now. Don't worry, we've got plenty of chances to, to buff that little bad boy up. So we're going Meteor. Then we go Enhanced Meteor. So if it casts Meteor, it hits three or more enemies. There's a 30% chance an additional Meteor falls on the same location. So you got Meteors falling all over the place. And then we're going Mage's Meteor so that it just falls faster. You can go either one here if you want the Meteor to immobilize things. But just the kind of the way the play style is of this build, I like things being able to move around unless I want to freeze them in place. Uh, specifically as a defensive measure. This will lock those things in place and maybe that prevents them from walking into my firewall, whatever it is. So I kind of like Mage's Meteor so that it falls down faster and actually gets, on the, gets into play a little bit better. We're going to go back into Inner Flames to pick this back up at level 34. And then we're going to come down here to Combustion, our Capstone. So this is that big one like we talked about before, right? So your burning effects deal 2% increased damage per unique source. And we've got four sources. One, two, three, four sources of burning um, i might be stupid i missed a fifth but still there's four sources so that's going to give us 16 percent total increased damage per unique source of burning is lovely and once we've done that though we're going to go into our ultimate passives do we yes no we don't we're going to go back up here to precision magic because now that we've got that enchantment um, of meteor i want to increase the chance of lucky hit going off so now lucky hit went from eight percent to an additional 15% chance. We're at 23% for lucky hit uh, to trigger. And that is quite good for the enchantment when it comes to um, uh, this going off. So I'm sorry. This is an 8% chance when lucky hit triggers. I'm adding 15% chance that a lucky hit does trigger. So I'm increasing the, opt the, the option for that 8% to actually kick off. Lucky hit is a very convoluted mechanic and I can't recommend enough. Riker has an awesome ultimate um, mechanics guide on every single underlying word in the game. I strongly recommend it. Please go and check his channel out. I mean, he's, he's, he's what like the god of Diablo. <laughs> so go and check him out for uh, some really good information there. But now that we've done precision magic, we're gonna jump back into firewall. Finish that bad boy off to, to level five. We're going to put two points into Meteor, and we're going to come down here into Fiery Surge. Killing a burning enemy increases your mana regeneration by 10%. That's okay. The big thing here we want is Endless Pyre. Three points into that, you deal increased burning damage to dem to enemies for each second they remain burning up to 15 seconds, or up to 15% after five seconds. It's just too good. It is just too good. We're going to go back to Align the Elements finish that off. So now again, to explain this, right, you gain 3% DR against elites. This includes bosses for each second you haven't taken damage from one up to 40%. So before this would take 40 seconds to get the full DR. At two, it takes 20 seconds to get the full DR. At three, it takes what, like 16 some odd seconds, uh, 14 seconds, whatever it is. And the argument can be made of going to two versus three points. But I mean, in a boss fight, that six some odd seconds is pretty crucial to get more DR online. So it's gonna be nice for you to have that nice amount of padding in your build. We're gonna jump back into Meteor, making it way more girthy at level uh, 50. And now we're into our pretty much our renown points. These are points that you're gonna be getting from doing all of the level stuff, uh, all the, the zone stuff and what have you. So we're gonna put three points into warmth so that you heal for every, every one second, you heal for 0.9% of your max life for each nearby burning enemy. So nearby is a term that we don't necessarily know the distance of. Close is a term and far are, they're all three are, are different terms in this game. Um, or distant, it's called distant, sorry. Um, distant and close are underlined, underlined terms that have actual mechanics. Nearby is nebulous. We don't really know what it means. Is it further than close? Is it Further, is it closer than distant? We have no idea, really. We have to test that out. I can't, of course, test it because I don't have the game yet, but we will do that in due time and I'll have you bet, I'll give better information. I'll put it into the uh, pinned comment. And then after that, we're just going to go Frost Nova, teleport, Frost Nova, teleport, Frost Nova, teleport, and we're done. So four from four into both here. This makes it so that Frost Nova is on a 20 second cooldown, which is lovely. And this makes it so that our teleport is a sub 10 second cooldown. That's the big focus here I wanted for teleport is to get it to 9.3 seconds. I mean, you could go five points into it to get eight seconds, but I like having this being under just under 20 seconds for your Frost Nova. 
So this is your build, your per level breakdown of everything. Let's quickly jump into all of our aspects and what have you to, before closing our video out. Now this, it's gonna actually be very straightforward. There, there's nothing crazy here. Um, there are aspects that you can go for that are really, really, really good. There are some that are badass that change the way that meteors fall and all these things. But the problem is that they're all drop aspects. And I'm not gonna give you much drop aspect information because they're just random. We don't know when you're gonna get them. You're more likely, more than likely gonna really pull them out your ass more 50 plus. You're gonna find them on your leveling journey. If you find any aspect that fits the play style and you actually particularly like it, stick with it. Don't even worry about it. There's not a big deal there. The problem is that it's just not dependable for me to tell you get that aspect like it is for these three. Because these three are codex aspects, you just simply go to the dungeon, complete the dungeon, and you get the, the uh, aspect. And we've had the same ones in all of our builds so far, but aspect of the expectant, attacking enemies with a basic skill, increases the damage of your next core skill cast by 5%. We have edge master's aspect. You'll probably kind of swipe off of this after you drop fireball, because this is not a, these are neither of these are core skills, um, but it works in the very beginning. You, you won't really need it beyond a certain point. Edge Masters skills deal up to 10 to 20% increased damage based on your available primary resource. So if we, the more mana you've got, the more damage you're going to do. Eluding Aspect here is my favorite uh, kind of get out of jail free card. Becoming injured while crowd controlled grants you unstoppable for four seconds. This effect has four, 40 to 20 second cooldown. So you can stack this with all of your other really awesome defensives to really just not ever worry about dying. And you get this in Caldera Gate in Fractured Peaks, which is an Act 1. Same thing here with, oh no, these are both in Act 2 and Skull's Glen. So you'll be able to get both of them in Act 2. For your gems, you want to focus on Amethyst because you're going to increase your damage over time, which is your burning. For your armor, put rubies in for max life. Uh, you could also put in Sapphire. Ooh, what's the one for... I thought there was one for... No, I'm just an idiot. I thought there was one for mana. Uh, diamonds is not a bad idea for barrier generation, but I think max life is just really the way to go. Now, diamonds, of course, uh, as I've always said, diamonds give you all res, skulls give you armor, and the way that armor works in this game, if I come over here to stats, armor, non-physical damage taken is partially reduced according to your armor contribution. Armor contribution, uh, the inherent percentage that armor contributes to your base damage reduction against non-physical attacks in PvP. The remaining damage reduction is determined by your appropriate elemental resistance. So, um, don't think of this as a one-to-one. -one. Uh, a lot of people have looked at this as, oh, okay, 50% of my armor is all res. It's not that way. Um, it's a different kind of attribute. So, I focus on all res. Uh, we don't really know necessarily how the armor shakes out. We're probably going to start finding that information out as people have started to uh, post more and more stuff online. But until June first, and we can, I can really get in the game and give you more information on it. I just suggest going diamond all res because it's what all Diablo players know. But this is your build. These are your aspects. These are your skills. If you have any questions, anything like that, by all means, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. And like I said too, guys, this is a very straightforward build. It relies heavily on doing lots of burning, and I think it's going to be one of those ones where you're going to go firewall. That's that's all right. That's that's okay, I guess. But the fact that you're triggering lucky hits so often and meteors are falling down and there's a percentage, a 30% chance that that meteor drops another meteor with it is just even more awesome. So, I mean, like you, like I said too, you can definitely have fun with some of these aspects like Armageddon here. A hail of meteorites fall during Inferno. That's the Inferno mass or, um, mass or uh, uh, ultimate I was talking about. Uh, aspect of Shattered Stars, meteorites fall around meteor, dealing fire damage and impact. Your meteorites additionally burn enemies. They hit, so that's another source of burning. So if you can get that, awesome, go ahead and grab it. There are so many really, 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 really cool aspects for me, um, for Sorcerer that you can really pull and take advantage of. You just got to find them, unfortunately. So as always, guys, please do make sure you are playing the game in the way that you want to have the most fun as possible, but I'm here to help you out if you need it. But have a good one and take care.